Welcome to Washington State Legends of Soccer and our series, Why History Matters. I'm Frank McDonald. Today, our guest is Peter Hatchup, one of the Northwest's most accomplished players of the 80s and 90s. Pete is a Seattle native, a two-time NCAA champion at Seattle Pacific, a former player with the Tacoma Stars and Major League Soccer, and a league MVP and league champion with the A-League Sounders. He's now coaching with Valor Soccer. Welcome, Peter. Thanks, Frank. Happy to be here. All right. Well, we've known each other a long time. Uh, we could probably get into the minutia really quickly, but I'd rather get a broader understanding of um, why you've always been recognized as someone who not only makes history, but retains history upstairs. Uh, you just always had a knack for retaining facts. And so I'd like to explore that a little bit uh, now. Uh, where do you think you picked up on that trait, that that knowledge of sports or even um, general topics uh, in the past? I think I've always been a fan of history. I, you know, our family um, always read a lot and did a lot of reading. And when I was young and my first uh, athletic memories really are going up to Seattle U on Saturday mornings with my dad when he was playing basketball and hearing stories about the O'Brien twins and then Elgin Baylor, which made me want to look up the history of the game, um, starting with basketball. But then when I started to get into soccer, uh, the same thing, I wanted to find out more information. And soccer back then, uh, well, uh, soccer didn't really uh, make its mark here till 74. Um, was that when you started to look into history of soccer? And I thought there was a lot of lot out there at that time. Yeah, there and shortly thereafter. I mean, the Sounders got here uh, at the same time the 74 World Cup was going on, basically. Um, and that was our my first view into the world game. Um, and and from that point on, you kind of want to find out what happened before. Did you go to any of those? I think back then you had to watch a World Cup on closed circuit at like one of the arenas. Did did, did you ever make it to there? Or was that more, um, well, let's say, did, did you wait another World Cup before you bothered with that? Yeah, the 78 was the first one that I went to watch the final uh, in the kingdom of all places is $5 for a ticket. And they had the big screen on for the uh, Holland Argentina game. And um, I realized the big screen was so fuzzy that I just sat close to one of the TVs up in the um, hundred section where I could see from up close, but th that was the first uh, watching of real international soccer. Other than I do recall seeing the 74 final, um, on soccer made in Germany at one point. Okay. So, you know, Toby Charles condensed one hour version where he already knew all the details. So he sounded like a genius announcer. <laughs> um, and did uh, college soccer, I, I mean, you've, you've told me facts or I can't remember where you quizzed us of uh, what Seattle Pacific player had the most postseason goals. So when did you start to, um, when you went to Seattle Pacific, uh, they had won one championship a few years before you got there. Uh, did that did was history an attraction? Their their history of achievement at SPU. Yeah, um, you know the the history that the fact that some of these people were people I actually knew uh, that played on that first championship team. Um, you know, I, you talk about the history and it was started smaller. I remember walking in to the locker room at Seattle prep when I first got there and looking up on the wall where they kept the records and seeing Eddie Kruger's name and John Hennessy's name. And these are people I already knew about. Um, and then trying to look and say, okay, what can I do? You know, and it gave me targets kind of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, did you, did, did many people share in that at the time? Uh, probably not, not too many and probably not too many were interested in listening to me, tell them about it. So, <laughs> uh, but you know, a small, a select group, you know, cared yeah. about that and, and tried to look at what had come 
before them and and try and go farther mm -hmm. uh so when uh when you uh think about history or when you went looking for it you probably there i remember there was a columnist in soccer america named sam folds and uh he was, uh, and then there was a columnist, uh, Vince O'Keefe in the Times, and um, uh, it escapes me who the PI writer was, but they would always bring up these topics like uh, the old timer picnic at uh, Black Diamond or something like that. So I knew there was something more, but you'd only get nuggets of it. When, um, so think of the, do you, have you ever thought of the history as a dusty old book or a box or a, does a player naturally encounter history as you go along uh, your progression and in, 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 as a collegian and a professional? Well, for me, um, I never thought of the dusty old information in a box. It was because it's, it's people and, and it's a, it's a living history and you look back. Um, and to me, it helps me figure out how we got where we are or give you things even to try. I mean, I remember going back and I don't know where I got this information or what book it was, but reading about all the previous world cups and, and them talking about Leonidas from Brazil in 38, the first guy that was doing bicycle kicks that was mentioned. And, you know, I think it's popular that Pele was doing it, you know, 20, 20 years later, but you know, it wasn't brand new and probably Pele probably learned it someplace yeah and, um and the Cruyff turn is part of the history of the game and the maradona turn and all these things that have gone before us players are now doing um i i laugh because in recent memory there's a move where the guy rolls the ball and steps over it and people call it the ronaldo and Precky and a few other guys were doing that back in the mid eighties when I played indoor with them. Yeah. And I don't know that they invented it. You know, there's very few things I think somebody could claim to invent. Um, and most of us learn by seeing the people that were before us. And the more, you know, about that, the, the better chance you have to pick things up. Yeah. I think there's so little video. I mean, there, there's more and more being recovered, but it just seems like unless you have video and social media to uh, to, to make it go viral, people uh, sometimes discount or just not even believe that it happened until they saw it. So I, I get that. Um, uh, you actually, so you've, you're a youth coach and you, you took a, a youth team and they, I get would. I would say that made history within Crossfire when um, they won a championship about 10 years ago. Is that right? I hate to say it was probably a lot more than 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was probably 2006 now um, where the group of girls uh, went and won a national championship for the first time for first time for Crossfire then. And there's been a few since then. But um, that so when you do you run into those those girls now women and uh, i mean is that a bonding kind of thing that they were the first yeah i mean it wasn't that long ago that i was at one of their weddings um lindsey elston who has gone on to coach since then but and was a all pac 12 performer at the uw and played for the under 20 team um got married recently so and that was a nice chance to run into a bunch of them but um you know it was i don't know if it's the championship was as much a bonding thing for them as just their overall time spending together over the years. Okay. I get that. But it's not always about chasing numbers. It's, it's the shared experience. I, I would imagine that, like you say, every team will have a bonding experience and they might win a championship. They may not, but um I've seen the way that you've hung together with the championship teams at Seattle Pacific and, and they get together, uh, uh, you know, on a semi-regular basis. And it seems like they have that in common. And uh, uh, that's, that's something to see around here is, is the way the community is held together by some common history. 
Yeah, and I, I think it is special. And I think you can go back even further to teams that didn't quite win a championship. I I think that 77 Sounders group that made it to soccer ball and lost to Pele's last competitive game, um, Adrian Webster and, and those guys, I think they still stay in touch with each other to a certain extent. And I think, you know, sometimes you win, but going on a run like that, you know, does bond you together and and bring back great memories, um, both of the games, but of the times you spent together. Yeah. Is there a feat that you were involved in or you witnessed at least closely that that uh, that you most appreciate or that you find yourself or a few of them that uh, you reflect upon time and again? Um. Not so much an individual feat. I think it's just the the shared experiences. I mean, for me, it was part of my growing up and all the way back to, you know, University of Washington Husky Classic going to games and watching Paul Mendez when I was a little kid, about the same time as the Sounders were first coming on board. And, mm -hmm. and those were experiences that we got to have that the people ahead of us didn't get. Um and because my history of soccer in this area into my early 20s was probably the college game, the pro game, and then a little word of mouth um, about the amateur game. Yeah. Other than that, there wasn't a documents to find out what was had gone on before. Right. That's right. Yeah. A lot of it was undocumented. It was storytelling is, is about what it was. It was going to Denzel's shop and hearing someone talk about the Hungarians, probably, you know, that's, that's how you picked it up. Yeah. And, it, you know, they're talking about the Hungarians and then, okay, Croatia. And, but, and that was, uh, you know, it, there was players playing the game at a pretty high level around here um, before it was professional. There just wasn't a professional outlet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can tell you that uh, my son, who I took to an A-League Sounders game, still remembers a, a, a couple of maneuvers you did and, and still will, uh, when your name comes up, he'll he'll say, he was the guy that, and then I'll say, yeah. And it had nothing to do with scoring a goal, but it, it, I think it got you an open look in front of the net or uh, it was just kind of special. No one else was out there doing it. So thanks for giving us some memories. Uh, really appreciate it. Pete, thanks for sharing your story and all the glory and fun you've done for soccer in Washington and beyond. Uh, that wraps it up. Thanks to our producer, Leanne Johnson, and thanks to you all for watching Why History Matters. For the more on the history of Washington State soccer and to learn more about Washington State legends of soccer, go to wasoccerlegends.org. We appreciate your support, and we'll see you next time.